Now that we know our complete genome, we turn our attention to locating specific parts that perform the actual task of guiding the construction of our bodies. This task is ongoing and complicated, but so far we have been able to identify all the sequences that are called genes. A gene is a section of DNA molecule that contains the instructions for making a protein. And while not all the letters of a gene are consecutive in a genome, genes range from 100 letters to many thousand letters long. They are also separated by long sections of DNA that are not genes, and therefore do not make proteins. Genes constitute only about 1% of DNA. To our great surprise, it turns out that the human instruction set appears to contain only about 25,000 genes. We are very complicated to have so few genes, and the secret to that complexity may lie in some of the sections of our DNA that aren't labeled as genes. While only 1% of our genome is comprised of genes, 10 to 20% of our genome consists of regions that might have no sufficient function, and the rest is now recognized to encode different snippets of RNA that have tremendous functionality even though they don't encode the proteins. But for now, let's examine the sequence of steps that allow each gene to perform its function. To begin, the double helix must unwind and separate temporarily into two single strands along a gene. Then, a single strand copy of one side is made as free molecules attached to the now exposed template. In this process, T is replaced by its close cousin, U. This modified single-strand copy of one side of the DNA helix is called RNA. In most cells, at any given time, each chromosome's DNA is unzipped at maybe 30 to 40 gene sites. And at each of these unzipped sites, one of the sides of the DNA acts as a template to create a single strand of RNA. So each cell is consistently making from a few hundred to several thousand different strands of RNA. Wow, now you're in my house, Diana. You said we have a hundred trillion cells and almost every cell is making hundreds of RNA strands from its DNA. Well, that means if you could unravel all the DNA in all your cells and put it end to end, you would end up with billions of miles of DNA. Yep, enough to stretch from the sun all the way to Jupiter many, many times. Okay, Diana, let's get back to the story. Tell me, what does RNA do that DNA doesn't? Okay. Each of your RNA genes can make its own set of unique proteins. The human body can make about 100,000 different proteins. But before we explore that process, let's take a quick look at the raw materials for the construction. Amino acids are molecules that join easily end to end. There are just 20 different amino acids that are used in the construction of all living things. Because their physical shape is their most important distinguishing characteristic, we will represent the 20 different amino acids as these geometric shapes. Here is how RNA genes make proteins. First, the RNA strand drifts out of the cell nucleus into the main body of the cell. There it is trapped into a structure called a ribosome. Then a molecule called tRNA fills the shape of the letter molecules three at a time and looks for amino acids that can fit into the shape like a piece of a jigsaw puzzle. Each three-letter sequence on the RNA strand has a shape that can only fit one of the 20 different amino acids that are available as raw materials in the construction process. ACA inserts threonine. UUA inserts asparagine. GGA inserts proline. CGA inserts arginine. 
GAG inserts, leucine, and so on. As each correct amino acid is fitted into place, it joins itself to the one in front. These giant molecules of connected amino acids are called proteins. Some may contain thousands of amino acids. As a string of amino acids is released from the gene template, it bends and folds into a manner resembling origami. The resulting protein molecule ends up as a completed three-dimensional shape. Change even one of the amino acids in the string and you get a different shape. And because proteins do their work by physically connecting to things, any change in shape means the protein won't function correctly. Each of the 100,000 proteins in the human body has its own unique shape and function. When you look in the mirror, what you see is mostly proteins. Some proteins provide structure, as in our teeth, ligaments, fingernail, and hair. Others aid in digestion in our stomach enzymes. They can serve as hormones and neurotransmitters. Our muscle fibers are collections of thousands of proteins. Other proteins are building materials in our bones. Even the lens of our eye is 90% crystalline protein. Hey! What? Like you don't know? The lens of our eyes are made out of mostly protein? Yep, and here's another thing about eyes and proteins. <laughs> Speaking of eyes, eye color is determined by how much pigment is in front of your iris. And that amount is determined by the proteins that make up and degrade that pigment. Several different genes are responsible for making these particular proteins. If there's no pigment at all, your eyes appear to be pure blue. This is why babies are often born with blue eyes. As the baby ages, eye color genes begin making proteins that make color pigments in the eye. If the genes that make the protein that make eye color pigment are defective, the blue eyes remain blue. <laughs>